Determine the color of bromo crystal green at a pH of 7.0. This is the information we have for our indicator. The pH range is from 3.8 to 5.4, and the color change as pH increases is from yellow to blue. Let's treat this dash and this 2 as the middle line, and we'll see that 3.8 and yellow would be on the left side, 5.4 and blue would be on the right side. Since 3.8 and yellow are both on the left side, that means all pHs less than 3.8 will be yellow. 5.4 and blue are both on the right side, so all pHs greater than 5.4 will be blue. And in between 3.8 and 5.4, we get a mix of the two colors, which is yellow and blue. Yellow and blue make green. We need to determine the color of bromo crystal green at a pH of 7.0. 7 is not less than 3.8, it's not in between, it's greater than 5.4, so 7 would go here. All pH is greater than 5.4 is blue, so the color of bromo crystal green will be blue. Let's do this next one. Determine the color of phenol red at a pH of 5.0. This is the information we have. The pH range of our indicator is 6.6 .6 to 8.0, and the color change as pH increases is yellow to red. Again, let's treat this dash and this 2 as the middle line. 6.6 .6 and yellow would be on the left side, while 8.0 and red would be on the right side. Since 6.6 .6 and yellow are both on the left side, that means all pHs less than 6.6 .6 would be yellow. 8.0 and red are both on the right side, so all pHs greater than 8.0 would be red. And between 6.6 .6 and 8.0, we get a mix of the two colors, yellow and red, that makes orange. The problem wants us to determine the color of phenol red at a pH of 5.0. A pH of 5 is not greater than 8. It's not in between 6.6 .6 and 8.0. It's less than 6.6, .6, so a pH of 5 would go here. We said that all pHs less than 6.6 .6 would be yellow, so the color of phenol red would be yellow. Let's try this one. Determine the color of methyl violet at a pH of 1.2. This is the information we have for our indicator. The pH range is 0.0, .0 to 1.6. The color change as pH increases is yellow to blue. Again, let's treat this dash and this 2 as like a middle line, so 0.0, .0 and yellow would be on the left side, while 1.6 and blue would be on the right side. Since 0.0, .0 and yellow are both on the left side, that means all pHs less than 0.0, .0 will be yellow. 1.6 and blue are on the right side, so all pHs greater than 1.6 will be blue, and pHs between 0.0, .0 and 1.6 will be a mix of the two colors, yellow and blue, that gets us green. The problem wants us to determine the color of methyl violet at a pH of 1.2. A pH of 1.2 is not greater than 1.6, it's not less than 0.0, .0. it's in between 0.0, .0 and 1.6. And since the pH is in between, that means the color of methyl violet will be green. Let's tackle this one. Determine the color of crystal red at a pH of 2.0. This is the information we have for the indicator. The pH range is 0.0, .0 to 1.0 and 7.0 to 8.8. .8. The color change as pH increases is red to yellow and yellow to red. So let's do each one individually. 0.0, .0 .0 and red are both on the left side, so that means all pHs less than 0.0, .0 .0 will be red. 1.0 .0 and yellow are both on the right side, so all pHs greater than 1.0 .0 will be yellow. In between 0.0, .0 .0 and 1.0, .0, we get a mix of the two colors, red and yellow, that makes this orange. Let's do the next pH range. 7.0 .0 and yellow are both on the left side, so all pHs less than 7.0 .0 will be yellow. 8.8 .8 and red are both on the right side, so all pHs greater than 8.8 .8 will be red. In between 7.0 .0 and 8.8, .8, we will get orange, because that's the mix of yellow and red. The problem wants us to determine the color of crystal red at a pH of 2.0. 2.0, it would go in between 1.0 and 7.0, so 2.0 would be here. All pH is greater than 1.0, and all pH is less than 7.0 is yellow, so the color of crystal red will be yellow. Let's attempt this one. Determine the color of phenothalian at a pH of 6.0. This is the information we have. The pH range is 8.2 to 10.0, and the color change as pH increases is colorless to pink. 8.2 and colorless are both on the left side, so all pH is less than 8.2 will be colorless. 10.0 and pink are both on the right side, so all pHs greater than 10.0 will be pink. In between 8.2 and 10.0, we have a mix of the two colors, so we're going to have a light pinkish color from colorless and pink. The problem wants us to determine the color of phenothalian at a pH of 6.0. 6.0 is less than 8.2, so we'll go here, and that means the color of phenothalian will be colorless. Let's do this problem. Estimate the pH and H3O plus concentration of the following samples. Separate samples of a solution cause indigo carmine to be blue. So let's find what the pH has to be for indigo carmine to be blue. It tells us that the color change for indigo carmine is blue to yellow. Blue is on the left side and 11.4 is on the left side. So for indigo carmine to be blue, that means the pH should be less than 11.4. Make sure that you write pH on the correct side. So since 11.4 and blue is on the left side, we should write that the pH is less than 11.4 on the left side. 
it tells us that phenol red is orange. So let's find what the pH has to be for phenol red to be orange. The color change for phenol red is yellow to red. Orange is a mix of yellow and red. So that means the pH is between 6.6 .6 and 8.0. And we can write that as the pH is greater than 6.6, .6, but less than 8.0. It also tells us that bromodimal blue is green. So let's find what the pH has to be for bromodimal blue to be green. The color change for bromodimal blue is yellow to blue. Green is a mix of yellow and blue. So that means the pH is between 6.0 and 7.6. We can write that as the pH is greater than 6.0, but less than 7.6. Finally, it tells us that phenothalian is colorless. Let's find the pH for phenothalian to be colorless. The color change is colorless to pink. Colorless is on the left side, and 8.2 is on the left side. So that means for phenothalian to be colorless, the pH has to be less than 8.2. And again, make sure that you write pH on the correct side. 8.2 and colorless is on the left side, so pH should be written less than 8.2 on the left side. Now that we've found what the pH has to be for each indicator, we can estimate the pH. The pH should be a value that works with every condition we wrote. So let's say we estimate a pH of 9. 9 is less than 11.4. 9 is greater than 6.6, .6, but it's not less than 8.0. So this pH estimation would be incorrect since it doesn't work with this condition we wrote. To estimate pH, we need to find the minimum and the maximum. The minimum are the left side numbers and the maximum are the right side numbers. So let's find the minimum. We have no left side number here. Here we have 6.6, .6, and here we have 6.0, and here we have nothing. The minimum that our pH can be is 6.6. .6. If our pH was less than 6.6, .6, phenol red wouldn't be orange. So we have 6.6 .6 here. Now let's find our maximum. We need to look at our right side numbers. So we have 11.4, we have 8.0, we have 7.6, .6, and we have 8.2. The maximum is 7.6 .6 because if the pH was greater than 7.6, .6, bromodimal blue wouldn't be green. So our pH is between 6.6 .6 and 7.6. .6. Let's check to see if our estimation is correct. So let's say our pH was 6.8. 6.8, is it less than 11.4? Yes, it is. 6.8, is it greater than 6.6? .6? Yes. Is it less than 8.0? Yes. So it works for this one. Is 6.8 greater than 6.0? Yes. Is it less than 7.6? .6? Yes, it is. And is 6.8 less than 8.2? Yes, it is. So our pH estimation should be correct. The problem also wants us to find the H3O plus concentration. Remember the full circle to get H3O plus. 10 to negative pH is equal to H3O plus. So we're going to take 10 to negative 6.6 .6 and 10 to negative 7.6. .6, and that will get us H3O plus concentration is between 3 times 10 to negative 7 and 3 times 10 to negative 8 moles per liter. And this will be our answer. Let's do this next problem. Estimate the pH and H3O plus concentration of the following samples. Separate samples of a solution cause crystal red to be yellow. Let's find what the pH has to be for crystal red to be yellow. The color change for crystal red is red to yellow and yellow to red. We have two pH ranges where crystal red can be yellow, so we're going to have to take both of them into account. For the first one, we have red to yellow. Yellow is on the right side and 1.0 is on the right side. So that means for crystal red to be yellow, the pH would have to be greater than 1.0. Next, we have yellow to red. Yellow is on the left side and 7.0 is on the left side. So for crystal red to be yellow, that means the pH would have to be less than 7.0. It tells us that thymol blue is yellow, so let's find what the pH has to be for thymol blue to be yellow. The color change for diamond blue is red to yellow and yellow to blue. Again, we have two pH ranges, so we're going to have to take both of them into account. For the first one, yellow is on the right side and 2.8 is on the right side. So that means the pH has to be greater than 2.8 for diamond blue to be yellow. Next, we have yellow to blue. Yellow is on the left side and 8.0 is on the left side. So for diamond blue to be yellow, that means the pH would have to be less than 8.0. It also tells us that bromocrystal green is yellow. Let's find what the pH has to be for bromocrystal green to be yellow. The color change for bromocrystal green is yellow to blue. Yellow is on the left side and 3.8 is on the left side. That means for bromocrystal green to be yellow, the pH would have to be less than 3.8. Finally, it tells us that methyl orange is red. Let's find what the pH has to be for methyl orange to be red. The color change for methyl orange is red to yellow. Red is on the left side and 3.2 is on the left side. So that means the pH has to be less than 3.2 for methyl orange to be red. Now that we've found what the pH has to be for each indicator, we can estimate the pH. Remember, to estimate the pH, we need to find the minimum and the maximum. Minimum are the left side numbers, and maximum are the right side numbers. So we have 1.0, 2.8, nothing, and nothing. Our minimum pH is 2.8. If our pH was less than 2.8, thymol blue wouldn't be yellow. So we have 2.8. Let's look for our maximum, 7.0, 8.0, 3.8 and 3.2. 
our maximum is 3.2 because if our pH was greater than 3.2, methyl orange wouldn't be red. So we have 3.2. The problem wants us to find the H3O plus concentration. Remember the full circle to get H3O plus. 10 to negative pH is equal to H3O plus. So we're going to do 10 to negative 2.8 and 10 to negative 3.2. And this will get us the H3O plus concentration, and it will be between 2 times 10 to the negative 3 and 6 times 10 to the negative 4 moles per liter. Let's conquer this final problem. Estimate the pH and H3O plus concentration of the following samples. Separate samples of a solution cause phenothalian to be pink. So let's find what the pH has to be for phenothalian to be pink. The color change for phenothalian is colorless to pink. Pink is on the right side, and 10.0 is on the right side. So that means for phenothalian to be pink, the pH had to be greater than 10.0. Next, it tells us that bromothymol blue is blue. Let's find what the pH has to be for bromothymol blue to be blue. The color change for bromothymol blue is yellow to blue. Blue is on the right side and 7.6 is on the right side. So that means for bromothymol blue to be blue, the pH has to be greater than 7.6. Finally, it tells us that indigo carmine is blue. So let's find what the pH has to be for indigo carmine to be blue. The color change for indigo carmine is blue to yellow. Blue is on the left side and 11.4 is on the left side. So that means the pH has to be less than 11.4 for indigo carmine to be blue. Now that we found what the pH has to be for each indicator, we can estimate the pH. Remember, to estimate pH, we need to find the minimum and the maximum. The minimum are the left side numbers and the maximum are the right side numbers. So let's look for the minimum. We have 10.0, 7.6, and nothing. So the minimum our pH can be is 10.0, since if the pH was less than 10.0, phenothalian wouldn't be. So we have 10.0. Now let's find our maximum. The maximum are the right side numbers. We have nothing here, nothing here, and 11.4. So 11.4 is our maximum. It's the only number we have on the right side. So our pH is between 10.0 and 11.4. The problem wants us to find the H3O plus concentration. Remember this full circle to get H3O plus. 10 to negative pH is equal to H3O plus. So we're going to do 10 to negative 10.0 and 10 to negative 11.4. And that will get us an H3O plus concentration between 1 times 10 to negative 10 and 4 times 10 to negative 12 moles per liter. I forgot to write moles per liter. I'm sorry. This is what I like to call remember notes. If you remember and understand everything on this page, you should be able to estimate the pH for more than one indicator.